Hello, in this video, I'm going over how to create and run runbooks in Azure Automation. So in this video, I'm gonna go over how to create, edit, and start runbooks in Azure Automation. I'm gonna go over how to do it through the portal, and then I'm gonna show you how to do it with the ISC Azure Automation add-on. So with that, let's get started. So let's get started by going into our Azure Automation test account that I have set up. So I'm gonna go down to Runbooks, and in the Runbooks, you're gonna see a few default Runbooks that uh, Microsoft has available at the time of creating the Azure Automation account. Uh, I'm gonna ignore those for now, and I'm gonna add another Runbook, or add a Runbook to create one. As I create a Runbook, I'm first gonna give it a name. Let's call it AA Test. And it's going to be a runbook type. Here you've got the options of PowerShell, uh, Python 2 PowerShell graphical, and then a couple other uh, PowerShell workflow or graphical PowerShell workflow. I'm going to select PowerShell and create. You can also see over here there was an option to uh, import a runbook. After you create the runbook, I have to scroll over to the right here. I've got a couple options. First, I've got commandlets. These are commandlets that I can insert into Azure Automation. So if I go to, let's say, Azure RM resource or Azure RM storage, I could add all the code needed to connect to an Azure uh, storage account by inserting it from this commandlet option. We can also call other runbooks. Uh, but again, I don't want to call another runbook in this. And then the final option is assets. And down here, you can see I've got a connection asset that I could add in if I wanted to. Again, we're just going to create a simple runbook that is going to just write output. Okay, so after you edit your runbook, you have to save it. And notice the save and the publish. I'm not gonna publish it right now uh, because before I publish it, I wanna test it. So we're gonna go over to the test pane and to test it, I'm gonna click start. And we'll wait a couple seconds and we should see the output. There it is, hello world. So uh, that completed successfully. Let's go back into edit and I'm gonna to try to go back here in the test pane Again, there's an option to view the last test results. Now, it's been a little kludgy. It's been writing the output twice. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that must be some sort of bug. But you can see you can view the last, uh, the output from the last test without running it again. That's helpful if you're trying to troubleshoot a bug or something and uh, want to see how, what the output was like uh, without actually running that again. So now I'm going to go back into edit and I've saved it, it tests good, so now I'm gonna publish it. So I don't have any other version, so I'm okay to proceed. Now that it's published, I can start it. Uh, starting is different from test. You can see the recent job output, there's no jobs found. Now I did run this in a test, and it did complete, but it's not showing up here because it's not actually, a, that wasn't actually a job, that was just a test. So now that I have this published, I can hit start, and that's going to take me to a different screen. This is the actual job status page. And here you can see it's queued, now it's starting, and it's complete. So I can go to output, and we can see the output from that job. We can see all logs, so if there's additional logs, I would be able to see them in there. There's also errors and warnings, so if there were errors or warnings from this job, you would see them in here. I'm going to go back to that test runbook, and it says it's queued, but if we do a refresh, it's complete. So now I have a completed job showing the date, showing when it's uploaded. Now, what if we wanted to make a change to that? We could come in here and I could do another write output. We'll just do test two. And notice I'm not doing write host. Uh, write host does not work. There's no host in Azure Automation because it's all running in Azure. So uh, you have to do write output for this kind of simple test. I'm gonna save it. We 
we're going to test it. We'll hit start. You give it a second. Okay, so there, it completed. I've got Hello World Test 2. Everything looks good. Now we're going to go back to the run book. And I'm going to start this again. We can see it's queued. Okay, so now the job's completed. Let's check out the output. Well, wait, it didn't complete. Where's test two? Well, I did that on purpose because what we failed to do was publish it. So I made a change in test. And if we go back to all of the run books, we can see it's in edit mode right now. It's not publish. What that means is any edits I've made since the last publish will not be uh, included when the job started. So in order to get those updates into the system and have those run when the job starts, we have to publish it. So I'm going to go back in and edit. And here you can see I can either publish or re revert to publish. So if I made a mistake, I didn't like this, I could revert to the last published version. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to publish. And it says it's going to overwrite any previously published versions. Yes, that's okay. Now if I click Start, let's see what happens. And it's queued and complete. Now if we go to Output, there it is. Both, uh, both lines of output are included. Okay, but what if there's a problem? So let's go back into our test and we're going to edit. And we're just going to put in a line here, uh, 2 divided by 0. Let's save that. And we'll publish it without even testing it. Because what could possibly go wrong? So let's start. Now it's queued up. And we'll give it a second to run. Okay, so you can see here I've got my output just like before. That worked, but you'll notice down here I have an error. And that error says, yeah, you can't divide by zero. So that was a problem. Now, one of the things in my other videos I mentioned is it's, there's a lot of advantage to linking the Azure Automation account to Log Analytics. This is a case where that would be helpful. You could create a uh, alert in Log Analytics, so if the job failed, you'd be notified. That's how linking Azure Automation with Log Analytics can be beneficial. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to Azure Automation, my account, and I'm just going to create a schedule. So let's add a schedule, and this is one of the shared resources that you can make available to anything within Azure Automation. I'm just going to create this, uh, or name this daily. And we'll say it starts today at uh, 2 p.m. And set to my time zone. Now you notice one thing I did uh, fail to do was set this as a reoccurring, so it's only going to run once, which is fine. So I'm going to go back to my run books and go into a test and schedule now here i'm just going to link this job to a schedule that i already created and if i have any type of input i would change it here but i don't so i'm just going to click ok and now in about an hour that's going to run so that is how you create a run book edit a run book and schedule it through the Azure Automation Portal. Next, I'm going to go over the Azure Automation ISE add-on. So to do that, first I'm going to go into PowerShell ISE as an admin. There's a couple steps I need to take to get this installed. I'm going to first install the module Azure Automation Authoring Toolkit with the scope as current user.
and I'm going to click yes to all on the untrusted repository. Once that's done installing, I'm going to import the module. Now you can see this has opened up the Azure Automation ISE add-on. And the first thing we can do is sign into our Azure Automation account. So once I'm logged in, I'm going to select my subscription. So this is telling me that it's having a problem with the Run As account. And that's to be expected because of some encrypted values that I couldn't pull down. I'm just going to click OK on that. So now we have the path where the workspace is going to go. Um, we have our Azure Automation account list. I'm going to leave it at this one that we've been working on. And some other information here, the th uh, certificate thumbprints, and then status. If we go over to Runbooks, you can see we have the AA tests that we've been working on and a couple of the other ones. So if we look at this, uh, we can uh, create a new one, but I'm going to select the AA test and it gives me the option to download. So I'm going to download that and I'm going to open it. So there it is. This is the uh, run book that I had created in the previous steps. Now it's on my local machine. I can test that in Azure. Now one of the things you'll notice right away is it opened up the output. This is actually the output from the last command, kind of like as we went into uh, the test the run book, we could view the last status. That's what it's showing here. If I want to see a run, I have to click start new job. Then it's going to ask me where I want this to run. I'll leave it at Azure and start. So this is the same as what we were doing in the portal. It's just can more conveniently located within the ISC uh, interface. And that's telling me uh, the same output as before and that I can't divide, divide by zero. So if I want to comment this out, I can do that and then save it. And I'm going to upload that draft. Now if we go back into here, we can view this runbook. But you can see it doesn't have that comment because it hasn't been published. But if we go into edit, there it is. It's been commented, commented out. And that's the difference between an edited and a published version. So now let's go back and let's publish that through the add-on. All I have to do is publish the draft. Now I can go back in here and view, and it should come up as commented out. So all these features are very similar or the same as what we could do through the portal. It just gives us a, a integrated interface in order to do that. Here we have DSC. If you're doing desired state configurations, you can also work on them here. We have some of the shared assets uh, that you can also look at and create. And then modules, if you uploaded any modules, you can also upload them here. So for run books, um, you know, we could create a new one. We'll just do a second one. And it's going to ask us if it's a script or a workflow. We're going to go script. And then uh, write output. Now I can save that, upload the draft. Once it's uploaded, we can test the draft. And there it is. So now I can publish it. And we should be able to go back in the portal, do a refresh. I guess we have to go back to the automation account. 
do a refresh, and there it is. It's published and ready to go. Uh, that's pretty simple. That's the way the Azure Automation uh, ISE add-on works. I hope you found this video informative. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. That lets me know people are watching it, and I'll continue making these. Thanks for watching.